day I'm really happy because a little bit more than a year after getting my Sony a7 IV, I am finally able to take full advantage of the amazing photo and video features seamlessly without making compromises. start by saying that I've been a Sony a7 IV user for more than a year now. I got it shortly after the release and I'm still super happy about it. I think it is still one of the best hybrid camera out there. But when we think about a hybrid camera, it is normal to think that it should be good at taking stills and taking videos. It is the case for the a7 IV, there is no doubt about it. But the thing is, with video, it's a little bit more tricky than photography. Or in other words, you are not as free as in photography when it comes to your settings. You may be familiar with the 180 degree rule and to make it short, if you want the best looking footage out of your camera, you must be shooting at a shutter speed that is double the frame rate you're shooting at. Most of the time I'm shooting at 24 FPS and the closest I can get to double 24 is 1 over 50. Secondly, I shoot 100% of the time in S-Log3 and that puts my Sony a7 IV base ISO at 800. So now if you think about it, 1 over 50 and 800 ISO, if we are shooting in the broad daylight, we almost have to close completely our aperture to uh, stick to the 180 degree rule. Sometimes it can also be impossible if your lens doesn't go above f16. For the most part, since I started on YouTube, I was making compromises when shooting the high quality b-roll a lot of you like in my videos. Compromise because if you want to also have control over your aperture, you must use some sort of ND or or VND filter to put sunglasses to your camera. The problem is when being a hybrid shooter and going out to shoot both video and photos at the same time, it becomes very cumbersome to screw on and off your filter every time you switch from photo to video. So I almost always ended up sacrificing the quality of the footage in order not to be bothered with this uh, filter screwing issue. But Nissi finally came up with a solution that can solve all my problems in that regard. Problems that I know I'm not the only one to face and some of you may also be dealing with on a daily basis. They are now offering a solution that allows quick and easy installation and takeoff of the filters, covering from one stop to nine stops of ND, and with the possibility to pair it with a mist or diffusion filter. And all that while maintaining colors true to real life with a faster and safer setup than the magnetic filters. They recently released the Swift VND filter system that I will introduce right now and explain all the possibilities. In the later part of the video, I will also to explain my exact use cases for my street photography, videography, hybrid shooting, so make sure to stick around if you are interested in that. At first, when looking at the filters, it doesn't look very special and not so different to what we've already seen so far, but it is a system where you have this VND as a base or this adapter ring, and then you can stick additional filters in front of them just by pressing them on. There are no magnets that you have to look for, and obviously there is no additional screwing, which is one of the best features to me. This also means that you have a ton of different possibilities. The bundle I have here is the one with the 1 to 5 stops VND, an additional press on 4 stops standard ND and a press on black mist diffusion filter. So if we think about it and do the math, it offers me a total of 7 different setups that covers basically all I need. A VND from 1 to 5 stops extendable to 5 to 9 stops with the additional ND and the possibility to get those with or without a black mist filter. You know, this kind of uh, diffusion filter that a lot of filmmakers are using to soften their footage and try to remove the digital edge of uh, modern cameras. Just to give you a few examples, I can place the 1 to 5 VND, so I have that. And if I press on the black mist on top of that, I have a 1 to 5 VND black mist filter. And I can also press on all together the normal 4 stops ND, so I get a 5 to 9 VND black mist filter. I won't enumerate all the possibilities, but I guess you can get it. For the ones using a camera without a low pass function, you can also get a UV IR cut filter to maintain the depth of your darker colors, so it would bring the total possibilities to 15. The real wholesome part for someone like me who does hybrid photo and video shooting in a pretty hectic environment, which is the streets, is 
is that I don't have to have the VND screwed on at all time. I can just place this adapter ring which will not affect my photos and that is very important to me. But then when I switch to video I would just have to press on the four stops ND filter on top of my lens and now in pretty much 99.9% .9 of the cases I will be able to stick to the 180 degree rule without making compromises. The press on system is much easier to use for me compared to a magnetic filter system and more importantly it is much safer. We really don't want our premium filter to fall on the ground and crack, right? You may be thinking that on paper it looks like a very attractive solution, but what if the filters are not top quality ones and we end up with pretty common problems that comes with VND and even ND filters? Nisi is one of the world's leader in the industry of filters and I can tell you that they put all their knowledge and expertise in making this a swift system. They call the filters true color because they claim that it has no or almost no color shift. It is pretty common for any sort of VND and even ND to have a yellowish warm color shift and end up with colors in your footage that are not true to real life. I am no pro colorist by any means, I do my best and hopefully I will be a good colorist one day, but whatever. It is always a little pain in the butt to compensate and try to get back to true colors in post-production, if it is still even possible actually. Also sometimes the color shift of uh, cheap NDs can be so bad that if you set up your camera to auto white balance, it will struggle a lot to set itself somewhere and end up with a white balance that matches your scene. VNDs also have a bad tendency to be quite inconsistent in terms of colors and quality over the whole range they are covering. But with the Nissi Swift system you can really benefit from quality and color consistency of the whole range with almost close to no color shift. Just like other high-end VND, you can see on the side at what stop of ND you are. You also have hard stop at both hands to prevent you from going overboard and leading to this cross pattern typical from cheap VNDs. The front thread is on purpose slightly larger than your lens and that will help to avoid or reduce the amount of vignetting you typically have when using VND or NDs with wider focal lengths. One last little feature I like is this lever on the side to move the VND around. It is a small bonus but I prefer that over not having one. I am a little bit of a fat finger sometimes and it's easy for me to put my fingers and hands on my filters so it ends up dirty and would have to clean it all the time. With this lever I'm less likely to accidentally put my fingers on the glass and that's just a little extra thing I like. Now I'm showing you similar clips that I shot with and without the filter and I'm very pleased to see that there is close to no difference and no noticeable color cast or shift. I also use different filters so you can compare the Nissi ones with a standard ND filter and the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon VND I was sometimes using. You can see that the Nissi VND is on par with the standard ND filter which is very good news because they do not cover a wide range of f-stop Standard ND filters are usually more color accurate than VNDs, but seeing the Nissi VND compete with a standard ND is really promising. Polar Pro One, which is also a premium product with a premium price, is less good than the Nissi, at least to my eye. It is also important that a VND stays consistent all throughout the range it covers, so here I'm showing clips shot from 1 to 9 stops of ND, and you can see that there is no color difference. That is a very good point, and you can be confident that you will have consistent results regardless of the ND intensity you're at. Now I will finally address the question of how I use the filters when shooting both photos and videos in a pretty hectic environment like the streets. I also do a certain amount of travel, photography, videography and my workflow is the same in that context too. First I would screw the adapter ring on the front of my lens. Since it is just a ring without any glass it does not impact my photography at all. I consider myself more a photographer than a filmmaker so so when out shooting, my main focus is taking pictures and video comes after. With the adapter ring screwed on, I can take all the pictures I want. And if it's a scene where I see interesting motion or anything that would make an interesting B-roll, the only thing I have to do is placing the ND 4-stop press on filter in front of my camera, switch to the video mode and start recording. If I want to go for a softer look achievable with a diffusion filter, I can also put the black mist and the ND4 together and place them on my lens at the same time. When shooting in this hybrid way, the only thing I really want is being able to stick to this 180 degree rule and ND4 is already plenty enough to do so all throughout the day. I won't be too detailed about how I set up my camera but I have a preset to shoot in shutter 
priority mode, S-Log3 and exposure compensation at plus one. Doing so, my shutter speed stays at one over 50, my ISO at 800, and my aperture fluctuates to match the desired exposure. For me, it is totally fine if my aperture goes up to f4, 5.6, or even above that. Making a high quality cinematic sequence is not only about the depth of field and being able to open your lens at 2.8, for example. Interesting motion, nice light and composition is far more important in my opinion. If you want a fully detailed video about my setup for hybrid shooting, let me know in the comments. I won't do it now because this video would be way too long, but I'm happy to make it later down the line if you want to know more about that. Now that the hybrid shooting part is covered, let me explain when I would use the full setup with the screwed on VND filter. When I go out for B-roll shooting exclusively, I don't care about the photography side and in that context I want to benefit from all the things the Swift system has to offer so I can have complete control over my settings including the f-stop and consequently the depth of field. Basically anytime when video is my main focus, my main mission, I would bring the whole system with me. And actually if you look at it the whole system is not that big, it's quite small so it's easy to carry in a pocket or a small pouch. This is kind of crazy that all these ND and mist possibilities can fit in one pocket. Last notes for the one who may already have a Nisi VMD filter you can simply buy the add-ons and it will work on your VND, so no need to buy the whole system all again. Okay, I think we have covered all the most important points. I don't want my channel to be too gear-oriented and actually focus on doing the photography and videography, but since this is a product that solves a lot of issues I have in my own workflow and that I receive loads of comments asking how I shoot my photos and video posts at the same time, I thought it would be interesting to introduce you to these uh, sets of filters. Looking forward to reading your comments and let's catch up in the next one. Bye.